So the final agenda item tonight is not going to suffer from technical difficulties because we managed to get a live body here. And uh, it's very, very much our pleasure and our privilege to have Jody Patterson here with us tonight. Uh, widely read and respected journalist, Jody's one of those feisty, well, I didn't write that, straight from the heart communicators who always has a strong message that makes a lot of sense to me at least. She also causes us to think and reflect about some of the lasting inequities in our society. And her advocacy on behalf of the safety and support of sex trade workers in our community is just one example of her caring. Special welcome, please, for Jody Patterson. Thanks very much. Uh, I have a particular soft spot for Literacy Victoria. I think you were one of the first uh, organizations I met when I moved here in 89, doing, starting reporting work with the Times Call. Now, before I speak, I do want to point out, in case you're thinking, well, that's bold, orange shoes and a red jacket. In fact, I put on this jacket and was supposed to change my shoes. And then in a distracted state, I ran out the door and didn't realize until I was walking down Menzies and looked down and thought, oh. so I don't actually wear orange shoes and a red jacket, just to be clear. <laughs> but here I am, stuck. Um, so thank you very much for uh, asking me to speak. And uh, I know all the great work that you do. And I was uh, looking through the, the um, AGM report and seeing even more of it and uh, obviously in the kind of work that I've done around uh, with sex workers and with people who are living homeless and lots of addictions and mental illness obviously literacy is a huge issue um, the the funny thing is you, you I mean people are kind of like a, an onion right they come with so many issues when they uh, when you first meet them that uh, literacy is the one you know you peel off perhaps homelessness and, and housing is the first layer and then there's an and it, or maybe addiction is the one that's right over the top and, and then you know down and down and down and down until finally uh, there you can see this other issue but I guess that's the point is that people don't come with a nice little one label uh, issue that they can just sort of present nicely and we can all deal with it. I'm sure there are some people who have their lives completely together other than literacy issues but I'm going to guess that uh, <laughs> Just like me, the people that you have dealt with have many, many uh, other issues uh, that are all mixed in together. Um, at Piers, the we would see a lot of people who would have uh, they were they were start they were, they were set up for a struggle from before they were ever born, right? If their if uh, their parents were using any kind of drugs or alcohol, so long before they were ever born, uh, the disadvantage had begun, and life just added one disadvantage to them after another. Uh, the, the amazing thing was how resourceful and uh, how uh, high-spirited that group of people are in, in digging themselves out. Um, I want to talk about a sort of the broader issue. The kind of work that I've done over the years in Victoria has uh, made me a bit of a big picture person. I, 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 I find that my soul gets fed when I'm uh, closer to the ground, but I'm always drawn up. To look at the bigger picture and uh, the bigger picture is what I'd like to uh, sort of bring to people's attention. Literacy Victoria has obviously done uh, tremendous work, right? Uh, you're, you, you see the challenges ahead of you, you grow where the challenges are needed, you add a program, you, you, you know, if the things get a little tougher, you go, all right, well, let's figure out how to deal with it in a tougher circumstance and uh, oh, people are getting more complex, well, let's figure out how to deal with more complex people. So year after year, Literacy Victoria succeeds with uh, changing circumstance. And the, I do work for the Federation of Community Social Services of BC, and I, uh, through them, have gotten to know 100, the 137 uh, different uh, social agencies that rep they represent. And I see that over and over again as these uh, terrific community uh, services that just keep picking up the game, picking up the game as, uh, as things happen. And it's, it's, on one hand, isn't that an amazing thing? Isn't that wonderful? On the other, where do we back up? To? Who? Who are, who are the people who back up to look at the bigger picture and what's, what's, what's happening? What's happening? Why are people more complex than ever? Why are you dealing always with uh, more 
work for less money? Why is it always only going in a negative direction that everybody then has to become positive and resourceful and entrepreneurial about and uh, do something about that? When you, um, I remember doing the, uh, uh, I was on the, the task force that led to the coalition to end homelessness here in Greater Victoria and the task force took about two years of incredible amazing work but what you could see in that task force you know everybody had this vision of this uh, group that was going to get formed and they were going to somehow deal with homeless problems in, in Victoria we're just gonna go away we're just gonna handle that uh, issue but what you really saw when you got into it was dozens hundreds perhaps of policies that and practices and realities and shifting world circumstance and you name it all these factors that were uh, that were actually involved in solving homelessness it wasn't about build a house and stick somebody in it I mean at its essence there's that piece just like literacy isn't about sit down with someone who has no other needs and and help them uh, develop their literacy skills, right? It's about all of this other things. And uh, it definitely was like what we saw, uh, that just as an example, uh, you can't really address the problems of homelessness on the income assistance levels that we have because they don't pay the rent. So if you can't pay the rent, even if you have a house, then the rent is a major block for that issue. And so now to solve that piece, you would have to go and change welfare policy in BC. Uh, and over and over again we saw those points that nobody sitting at the table with all their great big hearts could solve. It was those, though they were bigger problems and, and, and required uh, bigger solutions and not just the bigger solutions of the provincial government or the federal government or what, any government really, bigger solutions by the community. So I went back in and looked at some of the figures uh, through work that I'd done with the Federation I had gone to look at uh, Disparity, social disparity in BC, because we use numbers and we use percentages. And, you know, like we, we know, for instance, that the non-completion rate for high school in BC is is the average is you know 28 to 30 percent, right? But that 28 to 30 percent hides huge disparities when you actually look at the different communities and what their real completion rate is. So, for instance, the the, the non-completion rate in North, in Upper Skeena is 70 percent. 70 percent of the students who uh, go into high school don't come out basically. Where meanwhile in Smithers it's 14.5 percent. So in a, when you think about how BC is, is, uh, is working on this front, you really can't look at the average numbers. The average numbers tell a pretty sorry story as well, but it's when you look at the disparity and when you realize that that disparity is growing and the, and the gaps are all growing. The, the, um, ten years ago, one of the ones that I think is the most significant for, for uh, or very significant anyway, for literacy, I shouldn't say the most because I'm sure they all are, uh, including that non-completion rate, but um, I don't know, I'm sure you all you might know the work of the Human Early Learning Partnership. Uh, they do a thing called the Early Development Instrument, which basically uh, measures the vulnerability of little kitties as they head into kindergarten. So they, they've got five measures and they just look at how ready to learn is this little person and that becomes that when they where the ones who are at the bottom of the scale are, are basically your vulnerability rate so ten years ago the vulnerability rate of, of these little uh, kindergarten kids in BC was 24 um, percent it started to climb up in the mid 1990s and uh, up to 28 percent and so we introduced in BC something called 15 by 15 which was by 2015, the province pledged that those vulnerability rates would be down to 15%. So what's happened? It's 2011, 2015, well, it's actually almost 2012, so drawing close, the vulnerability rate is now 31%. It's, uh, it's done nothing but track up, track up. So what you've got are, again, going back to that, uh, you know, you can be disadvantaged before you're ever born. We have kids that from age four, are being set up to not do well in the school system, right? They're not ready. They have uh, they have real competency problems, and that number is growing here in the in the capital region. Again, with the.